Welcome to your show. And our today's guest is the co-founder and CEO of Insider.com. He, she, he's an also, he's also a speaker, podcaster, and author of Thirty Days Startup and Business in the Time of Corona. And he's also the venture partner of Indogen Capital. And he's none other than Sam Kamani. And we will welcome him him to the show. Thank you, thank you so much, Bhavna. It's great to be on your show. Yeah, um, I always enjoy talking with you. And even before we started, actually, we've been talking and we got carried away talking. So yeah, let's let's get into it. Yeah. So how first the first thing I want to ask is basically how do you, how do you feel being on the show? It's great. It's great. It's always good fun talking with you. Just before this, we were talking about TikTok and how to grow <laughs> your channel on TikTok and all sorts of things, and and when maybe one day it will get unbanned in India and all those sort of things. So yeah, it's, it's great to be here. <laughs> Amazing. So I really enjoyed that conversation as well. Yeah. So now, so tell me, tell us about like your background, like not not just background, but your entrepreneurial background and how did everything got started for you. Yeah, sure. so um, it all got started with a lot of um, failure <laughs> and difficulty, <laughs> as as always with a lot of people. So I grew up in India. First twenty one years of my life, I lived in India, and then I moved to New Zealand about nineteen years ago. Um, and when I first moved to New Zealand, I moved as a student. I went to university in New Zealand, and after that, I found it extremely challenging to um, find a job. So I probably have applied for over five hundred jobs and didn't manage to get a job. And what you do when you don't get a job is you make one for yourself, um, which is a lot more acceptable in these in these days. But back in two thousand and three, it wasn't. Um, the the standard route. Um, so over time, I did all sorts of odd jobs, but um, eventually, when I couldn't find the uh, um, the the perfect fit for my skills, I pretty much um, created a job in in the sense by becoming um, a business owner, and and that's so you know it's it's all the failures that led to that step, um, and that's when I realized that that being an entrepreneur is for me. So, um, yeah, so that's how I started. My first venture was in e-commerce and 2007 world was very different. There wasn't that much of e-commerce first of all, um, but we owned a brand and I grew that from 2007 to 2015 at end of 2015, sold that, um, company. That was our first exit because I wanted to go back into like real tech where it's more scalable. So after that, I joined an esports startup, quickly grew that from 80,000 monthly active users to 300,000. And then that got um, acquired um, in 2018. And with that company, I was based in US for a short time as well. So I've worked in US a bit, a bit in Australia, a bit in, in other parts of Asia as well. So yeah, I've got a lot of um, interesting experience. And during all this experience, I'll, I'll share a bit about, about the about the current startup as well um, and how we came up with that startup idea. It's because during all these time, um, I, even after my exits, I did not invest a, a lot of my money in in any type of financial um, products or instruments. And that's when I realized that, um, hey, that I'm maybe it's not just me, but there's other people out there who are um, scared to or, or don't know enough to invest in say stocks or cryptocurrency or all those sort of things. And that's what inspired us to build Insider. We wanted to remove um, risk for people. The, the main reason why I didn't invest myself was because I found it um, that it should be too risky and too complex and too boring. So I thought that can I use my skills from esports to take these things, um, take this friction out of the, of the thing so more people can acquaint themselves about um, trading and investing and stocks and cryptocurrency and so on. Interesting. So now, like one thing though that came to my mind right now is yes. how, like, like what would you say like the ratio of people, like not just ratio, but yeah, you can say the ratio of people who are used uh, or let's say inclined to the esports compared to crypto- cryptocurrency. 
Yes, that's a very interesting question. It's like you know, nearly um, in when it comes to gaming, not not esports. Esports is still pretty small, but when it comes to gaming, um, two there are nearly two point six billion gamers in the world, or people who do um, who do game online, whether it's mobile games or console games or PC games or different types of um but people like to game and people like to compete whether they compete in sports on the field or or watch other people compete but that is just human nature that is basic and so what um led to this was that can we build something um where we remove risk for people yet let people compete against each other just like you know we want to remove risk so no one loses their house or life savings just like you know you go out and play cricket it's good fun but you're not going to lose the house if you lose the game <laughs> you know you'll still come back to have a house and you won't lose all your possessions but if you if you play in the real stock and the real crypto market and you bet everything it can be very risky especially if you are an inexperienced young retail investor um there is a lot of misinformation out there so why not provide a platform where you can predict prices where you can take part in stock um tournaments or um stock picking tournaments or crypto picking tournaments that's what our platform provides insider.com and and win prizes or or monetize your knowledge um without really um investing without really buying the underlying asset so so that's um what our platform provides interesting so i really like the spelling of insider so like it's not inside i n side it's a e n like you spell it for me yes e n it's e n s y d r dot com because of course business insider and all those all the forms of insider are taken as well as we wanted a name to be more brandable so we can create a brand around it and trademark it and all those sort of things so that's what we have done so yeah yeah amazing so what's the vision for you, you can say like where do you see insider after let's say 5 or 10 years so in uh, 10 years might be a bit too long for us to see how the world changes because the world is changing so so fast even in the last year the world has completely changed a year and a half um but what we do see in the next 5 years is we would like to create um a large sort of a esports and a community and that there are teams so say there is um say you're from bangladesh so there is like um uh, dhaka tigers or something like that and and the and the team from there has um a crypto expert a energy stock expert a us stock expert and and all those and that team is competing against say new york bulls or something like that you know um so yeah just like um how there is esports we build for the whole financial system there are in fact stock picking competitions that have been running for last 50 60 years but a lot of them are run on excel spreadsheets or google spreadsheets and pen and paper back in the days so we are just providing a more interesting um experience and a more streamlined experience so for people can learn people can um you know use their use their skills um without losing any money and still have the chance to play and win um so just like you know um if you are really good at um cricket or or any sport um you can um really compete at a high level without really spending your own money and in fact win because there are people following you and and yeah watching you and all that so yeah so that's the whole plan okay oh, interesting so now like so how important is the experience of a consumer for the for the product oh it is all about experience so um it's uh, it's a very good question because right now what we are doing is we have um over 100 users now um i think 120 last we checked something like that and last i checked and um every day we acquire to three users just organically we are still not running ads because we are still learning from our user we are seeing what they want so for example we have some very passionate users in latin america so like in argentina chile brazil um all those countries and they have been asking and they run their own now they've built their own whatsapp group and they're running and talking all the time in their whatsapp group 
the reason why they're doing that and that WhatsApp group has more members than our website. That has nearly 200 members. The reason is because a lot of them are not taking part in our website is because like they want a Spanish version and a Brazilian Portuguese version and they want all these. So now we know exactly what we need to do to make it more inclusive. So people from non-English speaking countries can join in um, who so we we know a lot lot of things already we because the community is asking that hey can you do this can you can you help us um, challenge a friend so you know make it a bit more social so we can go because everyone has an opinion on what the price of bitcoin should be or what a price of tesla stock should be um, but now you can challenge your friends you can challenge people um, on on that interesting and, and see who gets it right yep interesting so i i actually gave her like i didn't did anything on the website on your website but like i checked it out for for a while and it's interesting like it's quite interesting to like to, to see the interface and everything because i've n never seen anything like that yet absolutely it's a it is a game changer so we do <laughs> and we have built a very small part of the platform we have a very long vision so we do expect it to um, to be a, a massive player, you would be hearing our name quite a bit in future. Okay, I think you will get a lot more publicity <laughs> uh, once <laughs> once you launch, have a proper launch, yes. basically. Yes, now, exactly. It's to be still in beta at the moment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I want to actually talk about like the validating sure. ideas, well, like a validating ideas, and like how can a person actually have validated his startup idea when it is not yet launched. Yeah, sure. So there are lots of ways. I mean, um, before launching, th there are ways to validate it, but nothing is as good as really launching it <laughs> because you can talk all you want with people and people say nice things on your face because they are nice people. <laughs> you know, all our friends, family, they are nice people. They don't want to be rude to you. Um, and even they don't know whether they would use it or not. So the, the only real test is getting the product in someone's hands. Having said that, you can always put a prototype in people's hands and see how people react. Um, for us, maybe we have built 15, 20% of our product. We haven't built a full product. We are still building, but we wanted to get it out in people's hands as fast as possible and then slowly keep updating it, keep changing it as, as time goes on. And and then this way, we are building what people want. It's like we would not have known to add these um, other languages and and all that um, but we now know that there is a need so now we can prioritize that um, th there's lots of things that has been recommended to us by the community that we are now prioritizing compared to what we thought we should prioritize so get the, the smallest version of the product out there in hands of people as fast as you can that's what i would say Okay, so how can actually a person have go from having an idea to create the MVP like fast? Yes. So there is lots of tools you can use. So first of all, you could just do a ad campaign with just a landing page. It doesn't take long, um, and and see if people do like that idea. Second, you use don't have any program in the back end. You use something like a Google form or something, and then you do the job. So give you an example of DoorDash in US, which is a food delivery thing. So when those guys started, they were all students still in university. They just made, you know, print out pamphlet in the university printer and then put everywhere that for food delivery, call this or, you know, or order online and just build a form website, just landing page. And then someone ordered, say someone order kebab, or burger or something then they would just go run out to the burger shop they'd buy it and then deliver it um and hand deliver it and you know so they didn't have drivers they didn't have a sophisticated algorithm matching drivers and food and all that so they just did it all manually themselves something like that can they could test the whole thing out build it and start testing it in two days so you, you could just do that you could just do it manually in the back end and in okay. that way, you would have connection with the user and you would know yourself. So right now, you and we do a lot of things manually in the back end. So we are closer to our user. Okay, so you're connecting with the user. Like you're, you're personally yes. interacting with the user and you're learning from them. So yeah. let's say one thing though, like 
what questions can we ask a user before or like after launch? Let's say we handed them the product. What questions can we ask them to understand about the product more? Um, I would just see how they use it. And, and then um, because sometimes um, users themselves um, don't know and that's where you as a product person comes in. So you just see, observe what the user does and and asking open-ended questions instead of closed questions or something as um, that what is your biggest problem right now? You know, um, not regarding your product, but just in, in around that topic. So say, of course, if you're developing, say, a financial product, then you ask them, you know, in the financial world, like, what is your biggest problem? What is your biggest challenge? What is holding you back? Um, all those sort of questions instead of that, should I add a button here or not? So that that's irrelevant um, that you can look at UX, UI research online and all that. But um, just understanding your user in, in depth would help. So, and, and that comes by observation and just seeing how they're interacting with the product. Okay, interesting. So, Let's, when we understood that we can, th- th- these are the steps we can actually build lo- or let's say launch a product or idea fast. But yes. why do you, why should we even want to launch an idea fast? Because if you wait for 10 years, there might not be a market for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's because the world is moving so fast. It's like selling steam engines in the age of electric cars. You know, no one wants a steam engine in their car anymore because yeah, we waited too long. So yeah, especially in tech, tech, the world moves really, really fast. It's like, you know, products come and go really fast. So the timing is critical. And yeah, and you need to move fast because your competitors are not going to move slow. <laughs> so yeah. So now the next thing is, so let's say I have an idea now. Yes. So how much time should I allocate among marketing it or like say getting traction for it? And how much time should I spend on, let's say getting making, the for, product. Ma- making the mock product basically? Oh, so first you need to make the mock product. So whether it's two days, three days, how much ever, first you you need something. So, I mean, there, there are two schools of thought. One is that, you know, you just do landing page and just get users and get just to see if the demand exists. But once you know the demand exists, then go and spend some time building the product, whether it's two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then you have something to sell. Um and then focus on that in an ideal world you would have more than one founder in the team and one founder is doing building the product and the other one is selling the product so um because you only have so many hours in the day (laughs) yeah absolutely so i want to actually ask you so what's your perspective about the process of launch of the clubhouse so because club clubhouse is basically is very popular right now among yeah. people but they are not letting users the yeah but they are not letting users in so what's your perspective about that it's great it's great it's worked for them they are letting users in they've got over 10 million users so it's just a perception <laughs> but they no, were... not not many new products have 10 million users <laughs> And they have a small team. They can only deal with so much. So they are doing, they're working as fast as they can. And they want to, they want to get users. It's not that they don't want to. It's just, um, the thing is that I know there are, there is a school of thought that says that scarcity um, promotes demand. So, you know, because there's scarcity that, you know, everyone wants an invite and all that. Um that that is true but if the product is is crap then no one still wants it <laughs> they have a good product they have traction and and they can only grow so fast so it's like the day when um elon musk went live on it 
and he interviewed this was a couple of months ago in feb i think and all their servers were crashing and everything because there's so much load on the app and then you have a small team the startup's growing really fast you're continuously fighting fires so they can only grow so fast they have a very small team they've grown like super super fast and i think they've had lots of other failures before clubhouse those founders so it's not you know people only see the last minute success they don't see the 10 years or 15 years making that people only see that hey that doctor charges $2000 an hour or you know that lawyer charges they don't see that they had to that burger had to study 15 years before that to train for that <laughs> so they don't uh, consider that so yeah people only see the the overnight success but not the 20 years of nights that have gone into it <laughs> absolutely so do you believe that you need to have like 20 years of experience to charge $2000 an hour no 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 i don't i don't i'm i was just giving an example the thing is that i know some young people who are in their early 20s and and they are the best in the world you can charge the value you provide or the value that people perceive you have so you could charge whatever you want as long as people perceive that value if you are an influencer you are just 16 years old not even 18 not even legal age <laughs> you know but you have 5 million followers and you could bring like 10 million in revenue to a company what are what's your hourly rate worth you know just by doing one tiktok you sell like each product is 10 dollars and you can sell 1 million products in an hour <laughs> so your your 30 seconds is worth you know 10 million <laughs> so yeah you can charge the value you bring to a company or a product yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah the the influencer thing is quite different actually I, everyone wants to be an influencer like not everyone but there are exceptions lots but, uh, lots lots like, of people do like, want, to be, want to be because it is very lucrative but or, or if i if we just go into that topic a bit then it's quite depressing cuz let's say <laughs> you, yeah actually actually it is cuz uh, all the influencers like let's say you, you mentioned 16 years old tiktoker like she's like child demedio right yeah 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 and because of her success like she literally got death threats last year like last year in oh I it is very know. hard it is not easy do you know how many hate comments you get Yeah, you know, and- so many, so many people, um, especially if you are a girl, it's very hard. If you are male, it's still not that hard. But if you are a girl, it's super, super challenging. I've seen that online. Um, the amount of hate they get um, from everyone and, and like really rude comments and really bad comments they get, it is a lot. that they have to deal with and you are really young at that time and you have to continuously go through that all the time it really affects you mentally for a lot of people if you are not strong um so it is hard it's not for everyone <laughs> yeah like at 16 or 17 or like most of the people yeah. who are like famous on tiktok they are mostly around the age of like let's say 16 or like 15 to 20 or 21 20. 20 or 21 yeah. like 15 to 20 like these five years and th- they are all kids basically like i'm yes. among them but like they we like at the, at this is age people are kids like they don't know anything about the world like any, anything yes. th- anything that they say like they don't have any perspective yet they're learning yes and if you just just say like you're you're i'm not going to say like any bad words uh, you're bad yes. eh? <laughs> yeah okay uh, and it's quite depressing and people don't act, never see that side of scene. i know never yeah, never yeah. do yeah yeah even adults challenge um i mean struggle with it so yeah but no all, all good all good continue <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's okay yeah yeah so let's not go into tiktok that much like yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah can you tell me about uh, your like book which is like 30 day startup so why did you actually decided to write it on the first place yeah so basically um and we wrote it in 30 days because we wanted to be true to our message <laughs> so we did a lot of late nights and we were still working full time um i wrote it with uh, with a friend of mine we were running an agency at that time and um and yeah so we 
um, we did that. And one of the reason was that we wanted to show that you can build something in 30 days and over 12,000 people downloaded it, read it probably now around 15. I haven't checked the numbers for last three months, but yeah, around 15. Um, and as soon as we wrote and published it and put it out immediately, we get started getting messages that, Hey, we read your book and we found it helpful and we built a product out really fast and all those sort of things. So, um, that bought like real joy to us. And we gave so many copies away for free initially as well. When we first, um, published it just because of that reason, especially to students and stuff. Cause I was, um, I used to go and speak at universities and things like that. Um, and just, we wanted to inspire people that know you can build something really, really fast. Um, you don't have to spend two, three years, um, building something, um, so just get get it out in hands of people as fast as possible. Get feedback, improve on it. Simple like process. So easy to say than do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to take taking the negative comments. I say like it yes. doesn't matter your famous or not. Right, but taking taking the negative comments. No, just saying the listening to the word no. It's not good. It's quite painful. Yeah. It is very painful, but it is, it's good though. It teaches, you know, it's just like when your parents say no to you, something to you and it's, it's not fun at that time, <laughs> but then only later on, once you get older, you realize, okay, this was just the training. <laughs> Real world is even harder than this. <laughs> yeah. In terms of parenting, uh, yes. you are inclined to do with the things that your parents say, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you, you can't eat that chocolate. You can't play. You, you can't go, go to play play today. Yes. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, so amazing uh, to learn about your book. So I'll link that to with, with the uh, description of it. Also, uh, we're almost at the end. So now, what is learning and education to you? Oh, that's a... Uh... I mean, for me, learning never stops learning. You learn like I'm 40 now and I'm still learning every day, new things. So, um, I've learned a lot. And one of the way for me to learn, um, and educate myself is by doing the same for others. Um, because when you teach someone something you learn just like through your podcast, you are, um, educating people in so many new things. Um, and by that process, you are doing the same for yourself as well. So, you know, if I want to find out something about, say, um, NFT, for example, we are running a hackathon for NFTs, which is non-fungible tokens. And so one of the first thing I do is I go and make a TikTok on NFT. I go and find out what it is and I explain other people what it is um, from my, and that refines my thinking that, so I do TikTok for myself in a way, um, or I write LinkedIn posts for myself because that teaches me um, as much. So yeah, so that's what I think about learning and education. Interesting. So where can our listeners find you online? So they can find me on um, LinkedIn, Sam Kamani, S-A-M-K-A-M-A-N-I. They can find me with the same name on Twitter, on TikTok, um, and on Instagram. I'm with my podcast. I'll sit on a podcast with that title, Want Money, Got Money. So if they search that on Instagram, they'll probably find me. Um, and where else? I've got my own website, samkamani.com. Or um, the best thing you can do is go and check out and Insider, which is e n s y d r insider.com and you can um learn interact um play um on, on that platform it's a completely free we built it for the community so check it out and see what um, other people are predicting bitcoin will be worth or dogecoin will be worth in future <laughs> and yeah give it a try yeah, absolutely. So yeah, thanks again for coming on the show. So I'm really, I really, I, I know the listeners learn, learn a lot from it. I hope, and thanks again for the listeners as well, for listening to the podcast. And yeah, that's how we end it. Thanks again for Lovely. the Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. No, thanks to you for the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thanks again for the listeners who listen. Amazing to have you all here and bye. <laughs>